You are watching Junior Certificate Mathematics lesson. I am Raghwan Khar. Today I'm looking at Revision Mathematics Paper 2 and I am expecting to be having a calculator, a, a set of mathematical instrument. So before we can start, make sure that you've got those resources with you. Let us have a look at the revision questions. Revision question number one. Calculate the value of x, then b the volume, c the surface area of the triangle, the triangular prism below. So you are given a triangular prism here, and then a is expecting you to find the value of x. There is a side marked x, and you are to find its numerical value. So how will we find the value of x in here? You are going to apply the Pythagoras rule, and then what does the Pythagoras rule says? You are given the side here is 4 centimeters and then 3 centimeters. So the shape is like this. The angle here is 90 degrees. This is the 4 centimeters, the 3 centimeters, and then the x is here. So this is simply the application of Pythagoras rule. And the Pythagoras rule is saying, the Pythagoras rule says x squared, that is the longest side squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared and then it's x squared equals to 4 squared plus 3 squared and then this will simply mean x squared is equals to 16 because 4 squared is 16 meaning 4 times 4 plus 3 squared 3 squared is 9 that is 3 times 3 so this will be 9 here and then all we are saying is x squared is equals to 16 plus 9 is 25. And then to find the value of x, we can take the square root on both sides. So x will be equals to the square root of 25, which is equals to 5. This answers part A. So the value of x is 25. And then what about part B? Part B says you are to find the volume. And then how do you calculate the volume of a triangular prism? The volume of a prism is given as the area of the cross section times the height or the length. In this case, it will be, it will be times the length. So it is the area of the cross section times the length. The volume, that is B, volume is given as area of the cross section and then you have to multiply this by the length and then what is the area of the cross section the cross section is in the form of a triangle so we will have to find the area of this triangle this is the cross section so we are to find the area of the cross section here. And then the area of the cross section will be half times 4 times 3. This gives us the area of the, area of the cross section. And then multiply this by the length. What is the length as per the diagram we are having? It's 15. So it's times 15. And then 2 into 2 once, 2 into 4 is 2. So you have 2 times 3 times 15. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 15. So what you are simply saying is the volume will be 6 times 15. This is supposed to be 15. And then what is 2 times 15? This is paper 2 where you are allowed to use a calculator. So you can take your calculator and then multiply 15 times 6. 15 times 6 and then equal sign. So the volume of this is 90 centimeters cubic because it was given as centimeter. The, the dimensions were given in centimeters. So the volume is 90 centimeters cubic. And then part C. Part C says you are to find the surface area of the triangular prism given. So here you are to find the surface area. And then how are you going to find the surface area of this? The first one is the area of the two triangles. So 
that is C surface area. It will be the area of the two triangles. So we can say two times half times four times three is two times half times four times three plus the area of the other phase. Because here we are going to calculate the areas of these individual phases and then add them. We've got the phase here, 3 by 15, a rectangle 3 by 15. So this is simply meaning we are to add the area of the triangle 3 by 15. So this will be plus 3 times 15 plus We've got another rectangle on the other side, this side here. It's a rectangle measuring 4 by 15. So it means you have to add it as well. So this will be plus the rectangle measuring 4 times 15. And then how many faces do we have? We've got the 2, 3, 4. Let's check how many we should have. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's the other one. We managed to find the area of this rectangle, that are the triangle, the area of this triangle, and then the 4 by 15, we do have it. We do have it. And then the last one should be the 15 by, it should be the 15 by, what is the value of x? That is the value of 15 by 5. So we should add the other one, which is plus 15 times 5. And then we can compute this. 2 here once, 2 into this 2, 1. And then 1 times 1 is 1 times 4 is 4 times 3, 12. So this will be 12 plus 15 times 3 is 45. And then 15 times 4 is plus 60. And then 15 times 5. What is 15 times 5? 15 times 5 is plus 75. And then we can add this. It's 12 plus 45 plus 16 plus 75. So let's add them. 75 plus, okay, let's cancel. It's the 12 plus 45 plus 60 plus 75. That's all that we are to add. Is the 12? What do we have in here? Is the 12 plus 45 plus 60 plus 75. What is all this now? It's supposed to be 12 plus 45 plus 60 plus 75 and then answer the answer is 192 192 centimeters squared so this is the total surface area of the shape that we expected to find so we are seeing upon finding the surface area of the triangular prism given we are going to add the areas of the individual faces. All that you need to do is to calculate the areas of the individual faces. Then after calculating the areas of these individual faces, you add them. That will give you the total surface area or the surface area of the prism. Let's go for a short break. When we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. Welcome back from the short break. We are revising Junior Certificate Mathematics Paper 1. It's not paper one, but paper two, where you are expected to use a calculator. So let us have a look at the revision questions and work them out. We are at question number two. Question number two says, we are at question number two, and the question is saying, write m minus three all squared in expanded form, meaning you are to expand m minus 3. This will be m minus 3 times 
times m minus 3. It's not m squared minus 3 as you usually write it. It's not supposed to be like this. So when we have m squared, this is just m times m. So m minus 3 should be m minus 3 times m minus 3. It's not m squared minus 3 squared. No. You are multiplying m minus 3 and m minus 3. So guard against this. You are multiplying m minus 3 and m minus 3. Then how do you multiply this? It's m minus 3 and m minus 3. So this will be the m here will multiply all the terms in the second bracket. So we'll have m times m minus 3. Then minus 3, which is this one here, times the term inside this bracket as well. So we are going to multiply the minus 3 and m minus 3. Close the bracket. And then this will be m times m. It's m squared. And then m times minus 3. It's minus 3m. And then minus 3 times m. It's minus 3m. And then minus 3 times minus 3. It's plus 9. You are multiplying a negative number and a negative number. And then when we multiply a negative number and a negative number, you are going to get a positive number. So this will be positive 9. And then we can now simplify. This will be m squared minus, minus 6, rather minus 3m minus 3m. It's minus 6m. The signs are the same, so we'll add this. So this will be minus 6m plus 9. So the answer is m squared minus 6m plus 9. This is the answer. So we are simply saying when you expand m minus 3 squared, you will multiply m minus 3 times m minus 3, and the answer is m squared minus 6m plus 9. That's how you expand. And then the next division question, question number 3. From the distribution 3, 5, 8, 9, 17, 18, 20, 21, you are expected to find the median, the lower quartile, and the interquartile range. So that's what you are expected to find. The first part A, I want to believe this one will be a little bit simpler for you because most of the time that's what you have to calculate, the median. So you start by checking. Is the distribution arranged in order of size before you can start locating the median? So let's check. 3, 5, 8, 9, 17, 18, 20, 21. So the distribution is already arranged in order of size. So we have to locate the median. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the middle number, there will, there will be two numbers in the middle. And then those are 9 and 17. So this is simply saying the median will be 9 and 17. That is A, median is equals to 9 plus 17, and then you have to divide this by 2, because there are two of them in the middle. So it's 9 plus 17 divided by 2, and then 9 plus 17, this is 26, and then divide 26 by 2. 26 divided by 2, 2 here once, 2 here once, and then 2 into 6 is a 3. So the median is 13. That answers part A. Part B says you are to find the lower quartile. And then how are you going to locate the lower quartile? The median is here. That's where the median is. And then what about the lower quartile? To find the lower quartile, we will consider the distribution from 3 up to 17 because here, in fact, the median is not at 17. It's uh, between 9 and 17, not at 17, but between 9 and 17. The median is between 9 and 17. So this is where the median is. So what about the lower quartile? To find the lower quartile, we'll consider the distribution from 3 up to 9. So we have 3, 5, 8, 
and then 9. And then when we have this, what is the middle number within this distribution? Because the middle number from 3 to 9 will be the lower quartile. So the middle numbers are 5 and 8. So we'll add 8 and 5, then divide by 2. That will be the lower quartile. So that answers part B, lower quartile, which we refer to as Q1. So the lower quartile is given as 5, and then that is 5 and what? It's 5 and 8, so it's 5 plus 8 divided by 2, and then 5 plus 8 is 13. The 13 here is a result of 5 plus 8, not the 13 for the median, no. It's the result of 5 and 8, so 5 plus 8 is 13, divide this by 2, and then what is 13 divided by 2? The lower quartile, which is Q1, will be 6 5. So the lower quartile is 6.5. That answers part B. And then what about part C? Part C says you are to find the interquartile range. And then what is interquartile range? To find the interquartile range, we subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile. So already we have calculated the lower quartile and we found it to be 6.5. And then what about the upper quartile? This simply means we are to find the upper quartile before we can answer this question. So let us find the upper quartile. To find the upper quartile, we will consider the distribution from 17 to 21. So we will have 17, 18, 20, and then 21. And then that means we are to look at the, the, the upper quartile will be between 18 and 20. That's somewhere here. So that is our Q2. And then what are the two middle numbers? It's 18 and 20. So we are to add 18 and 20, then divide by 2. That will be the upper quartile. So the Q3 is given as 18 plus 20 divided by 2. The Q3 is given as 18 plus 20 divided by 2. And then what is 18 plus 20? This is 8 and then a 3 divided by 2. So it's 38 divided by 2. And then what is 38 divided by 2? 2 here once. 2 into 3 is 1. Remember 1 into 18 is 9. Meaning the upper quartile, that is Q3. Q3 is equals to 19. From here now, we can find the interquartile range because the interquartile range is given as Q3 minus Q1. So this will be Q3 is 19. And then what is Q1? Our Q1 is 6.5. So it's 19 minus 6.5. That's where our Q1 is. We calculated the Q1, which is the lower quartile, at B. So if the lower quartile is 6.5 and then the upper quartile is 19, the interquartile range will be 19 minus 6.5. And then what is 19 minus 6.5? It's 19 minus 6.5. It's 12.5. So the interquartile range is 12.5. We have 12.5. This is our interquartile range. When you want to find the interquartile range, you are to subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile. That will give you the interquartile range. Let's go for a short break. When we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. I welcome you back from the short break. We are revising Junior Certificate Mathematics Paper 2 where you are allowed to use a calculator. And we are at question number four. The question says, the diagram below shows a cylindrical container of diameter 6.9 centimeters and height 11.8 centimeters. Then question number A says, calculate the area of the cross section of the container. So this is a cylinder, and then you are expected to find the area of the cross section. The cross section will be this part. This will be the cross-section. And then when we look into this, we can see that the cross-section is in the form of a circle. 
So it means the area of the cross section will be the area of a circle with diameter 6.9. So it means we are to start by calculating the radius. And then how do we find the radius? That is A. The radius will be the diameter, which is 6.9, and then divide this by 2. It's the 6.9 divided by 2, because we are given the diameter as 6.9. And then when you are given the diameter and you are to find the radius, you simply divide the diameter by 2. So the radius will be 6.9 by 2. And then what is 6.9 divided by 2? 6.9 divide this by 2. Six point nine divided by two. Six point nine divided by two. The answer is three point four five. Three point four five. So the three point four five is the radius. And then the question says we are to calculate the area of the cross section. So the cross sectional area will be area of cross section will be given as pi r squared and then the pi what is the value of pi pi is 3.142 or you can use pi from your calculator so it's 3.142 times the radius and then the radius is 3.45 squared so we are simply multiplying 3.45 squared and 3.142. And then let's multiply that. It's 3.45 times 3.45. The answer is 11.9025. And we are to multiply this by 3.142. 3.142. And then what is the answer? The answer is 37.39765. So this is the area of the cross section, which can be taken as 37.4. Because when we write this to three segment figures, we'll get this as 37.4. This is the area of the cross section. And then, the next question says, that is part B, because we, have, we are done with part B, rather part A, we have found the area of the cross-section. And then what about part B? Part B says, we are to calculate the volume of the container. So, we are to find the volume of this cylindrical can. And then how do you find the volume of a cylindrical can? The volume is given as, that is B, volume, the volume should be volume is equals to the area of the cross section. In this case, is 37.4. So the volume is area of cross section and then multiply this by the height or by the length. And then what is the length? It's either the height or the length. So this simply means the volume will be what is the area of the cross section? Is 37.4 times the length. And then what is the length? The length is 11.8. So we are to multiply by 11.8. 37.4 times 11.8. And then that will be the answer. Let's multiply. 37.4 times 
point four. And then what is the answer? Four two six point three six. But we need to check. Did we have eleven point four or eleven point eight? We need to ascertain ourselves here. So it's eleven point eight, not eleven point four. So it means we have to multiply by eleven point eight, not eleven point four. So let's go and multiply by eleven point. Let's multiply by eleven point eight, not eleven point four, but by eleven point eight. Eleven point eight. Okay. And then this simply means we have thirty seven point four times eleven point eight. Eleven point eight. And then what is the answer? It's four four one point three two three two centimeters cubic. So this is the volume of the cylindrical can that we have been expected to calculate. And then I want to believe I've covered what I, I wanted to cover. But before we part, I want you to have a look at some few things. The summary. It says, remember to always have with you a set of mathematical instruments and a scientific calculator when revising paper two. It is very important that we have these resources because you are going to need them. Not only when revising, but even in an examination, you are going to need a calculator and a set of mathematical instrument. And then also, it is important that you show your working to avoid loss of marks. Situations where you are going to write an answer and then don't show working will result in you losing marks. Therefore, it is very important that you show your working. And then the next statement, but one, it is very important that you utilize your time effectively. You must have confidence in yourself, revise effectively so that you don't panic at the end of your revisions. Until we meet again in the next lesson, bye-bye.